Hey, my name's Sam Thompson. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video we're going to talk about, is there a huge property crash on the horizon? Now, there's a lot of indicators that say that could be just the case. So let's dissect it in this video. Now, make sure you stick around to the end because I've got some great stuff and new opinions to share with you. So you don't want to miss out on anything that's happening. Now, the market has been very, very turbulent, hasn't it, the last few months? And it just really makes sense because two years we've had, two and a half years, we've had some huge growth in property prices. And it just didn't logically make sense because we were in a pandemic, businesses were shut, people were getting paid on furlough, but still house prices absolutely went crazy. Now, because of what happened with the pandemic, the government printed an absolute shed load of money and billions and billions and billions, hundreds of billions of pounds. And that has led to a huge rise in inflation in the UK. Not only that, we've got the cost of living crisis, which has been fed into by inflation, but also, which is also inflation, the, the, the war in Ukraine. And so that's giving us an energy crisis and prices are really, really going through the roof and have been for a while. We've got some caps, obviously, by the government, but it's still very, very tough for people out there to heat the homes and uh, stuff like that at the moment. And so because of inflation, which hit 11% in October, that meant that the Bank of England has been raising interest rates at the fastest rate ever. Uh, and I was reading an article, the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England, if you look at the actual trend on the graph, they've risen rates before, but never this fast. It's a real unknown on what's going to happen. Now, what you would normally do is raise rates higher than the inflation number. So 11%, meaning you'd have to raise the rates to 12%. And that would crush inflation and put you into a recession. Now, we are taking a more measured approach here in the UK and we're having, we've had nine consecutive interest rate rises. We've gone from like a quarter of a percent to 3.5% as a base rate. And that has started to slow down inflation. We've gone down from 11% to 10%, but it's still cripplingly high. It needs to come down that little bit more. So the next meeting, the rates are more likely to go up again. Uh, but the meeting that we had in December, there was a bit of a fracture there. Uh, some of the governors were saying they want to put the rate up 0.75%. Some said for half a percent. And some said just leave it and just see what happens. Let this play out. So this all indicates that prices could start to drop. And if you read the papers, you'll have seen articles where it says prices are going to drop 50%. Some saying 30%. Nationwide have more recently come out and said there's going to be a soft landing and it's going to be just 5%. But what is true is October and November house prices in the UK have gone down significantly. 2%, more than 2% in November. We don't have the December data yet. So that indicates prices are going down. Now, is this an opportunity for you as an investor or someone that wants to get into the market? Absolutely. Absolutely, this is an opportunity. You see, so many people have said, I want to buy when the market goes down. Well, it's going down now. And so this is the time when you can get very, very good deals. And there are going to be certain people that just need to sell for whatever reason. Maybe they're selling because they want to go into their next deal, right? And so they're in a chain. And so Someone's fallen out because maybe they've lost their their funding for the deal. And you can come in with a slightly lower offer and grab that property to save that deal for them. There are people that need to relocate to all different types of area in the country. And they might just need to sell the property. But where the biggest opportunity is, is actually from landlords, existing landlords. You see, there's something that's happening at the moment. It's been happening a while called Section 24. And this year is where it really hits us because this has been a staggered increase in taxes on landlords over the last few years. So as a business owner, if you turned over a £1,000, you don't pay tax on that £1,000. You pay tax 
on the profit from that thousand pounds. So you can knock off the heating, the energy costs, you can knock off the wages, you can stop, knock off the cost of goods. And then you might end up with 250 pounds, that's the profit, and that's what you're gonna pay the tax on. With section 24, and now how landlords have to do, they have to pay tax on the full 1,000 pounds, also at a high rate on what their income tax level is. Now, they could be paying 50% tax on a thousand pounds turnover or rent, meaning 500 quid. Their mortgage could be 500 quid, meaning they get zero. Now, how can you overcome that? And you might be thinking, well, why would I buy a property? Because then I'd be a landlord. Well, you can structure it in a very different way. You see, the problem for existing landlords that have it in their personal name is the fact that is in their personal name. If you come along and buy it, you would then buy it in a limited company. You then get to run it as a business. You can write off things like mileage, heating. Uh, you can write off maintenance. You can write off your mortgage payments. All of these things come back in and then you're only gonna pay profit uh, tax on the profit that you make from that property. So it's very, very different. Now, why don't the landlords just change the property into a limited company. You can't do that. You've got to sell it to the limited company. Then you've got to pay capital gains tax, which is as much as 28%. So it's really not effective to move your property from a personal name into a limited company. And so because of that, 30% of landlords have left the market. That's one of the reasons why rents are going absolutely through the roof at the moment. So there's landlords out there that maybe bought their properties 20, 30 years ago in their personal name, as you would have done at that time, that just have made some good capital appreciation, that just want to get out the market, get rid of that liability, and use that money for something else, right? And so you can get some really, really good deals and structure some great deals with some landlords in the market. And that is an opportunity at the moment. And so they are more likely to drop their price just to get rid of that property. So that's an opportunity for you. Now, is the, is the market um, crash gonna happen? Is the market gonna go down more? Yes, like in 2023, house prices are going to drop for certain. Like they're gonna go down, it could be 5%, it could be 30%. Nobody knows for sure, but here's one thing we do know. Whatever the price you buy at, if you can buy it and the interest rate works and you can secure that interest rate for a longer period of time and your rental income is going to be good, then the deal works today. It doesn't need to wait until the market crashes. You see, as an investor, we make our money by buying and holding property. It's very, very hard to time the market and if you do time the market and the prices do go down 30%, maybe the interest rates are double what they are today. And so you'll still pay the same monthly payment. So there's pros and cons of both. But if you can get a deal to work in the market today, when the market comes good and the interest rates start coming down, you're going to reap massive rewards by being able to refinance that property. You can still make money in this market by looking for deals that you can add value to as well. So an example is I've recently purchased a three bedroom house for my daughter, Georgia. We bought it for 60, we've refurbed it for 12, we got it revalued at 100. We've taken a studio flat that I own that we've turned it into a, a one bedroom flat from a studio flat that adds massive value. So it's worth more money. We've taken a one bedroom flat and we've turned that into a two bedroom flat. Maybe you could buy a house where you add an extension. Maybe you could buy a house that you turn into two flats. When you add value, it isn't really a concern what's going on in the market. And that is a real consideration. Where you're going to find this really hard is if you buy a property to flip. For example, you buy a property and your goal is to do it up and sell it on. You've got the risk there that maybe the value that you add is what the market drops and then you're stuck making no profit at all. That's a difficult situation to be in. And so I think flipping is a good strategy in an upward market, maybe even a static market, but not so good 
when the market is potentially dropping. And so that is a real consideration to maybe not do that kind of strategy right now. I'd love to know your thoughts. The market's going down. That's a given, I think, in 2023. But what do you think you should be doing now? Do you think you should be buying if you can find a good deal? Do you think a good deal works whatever the market's doing? Or do you think you should wait until it bottoms out? Comment below. Do like this video, guys. That really helps with YouTube. Do smash the subscribe button and hit the bell notification as well. Check out all the other content on my channel, including this video right here.